Have you ever considered what you can do with a rock? You're probably thinking of skipping one on a lake or making a stack of them, maybe even throwing one at your brother. It's just a rock. You can't do that much with it, right? But that's where you'd be wrong. While you may not have considered it, you use rocks every day and in ways you probably never thought of. Rocks and asphalt make roads, runways, basketball and tennis courts, provide the foundations for sports fields, create a base for railroads, and protect the coast from storm damage and soil erosion. Rocks are also used in concrete to make pipes for storm drains, sewers, bridges, sidewalks, buildings, and schools. They are found in paint, paper, plastics, and glass. In powder form, they are used as mineral supplements for livestock, in agriculture as a soil conditioner, medicines, steel manufacturing, and household products. Assist in water purification and reducing sulfur dioxide emissions generated by power plants. Rocks are so useful that we mine more rock than any other mineral. In fact, more than 2 billion tons per year in the United States alone. That's enough stone for 10 tons of rock for every person in the country. Without the rock, none of this is possible. So when did a simple rock become so important? Since prehistory, people have found the use for stone. The early Stone Age, or Paleolithic, was noted for stone tools and weapons. Later, in the Neolithic, was known for stone temples and buildings. On a small island in the Maltese archipelago are the Giantia Temples of Gozo. They are the oldest surviving buildings in the world. They are more than 5,500 years old and older than the pyramids of Egypt and made entirely of stone. Some of the earliest art we know of, called petroglyphs, were pictures carved straight into stone. Petroglyph sites in Australia are estimated to be 27,000 years old, and in other areas could be as old as 40,000 years. The Roman Empire used stone to build its vast network of roads and aqueducts, and their invention of concrete revolutionized architecture. The Colosseum in Rome is made from concrete and stone. The Colosseum could hold over 50,000 spectators and used for public spectacles such as gladiatorial contests, dramas, and even mock sea battles. The Roman Pantheon, built in 126 AD, is still the largest unreinforced solid concrete dome in the world, even after almost 2,000 years. The dome itself is 142 feet tall, and the building is one of the best preserved of all Roman buildings having been in continuous use since the day it was created. Today we don't use as many large stone slabs. The rock is crushed into various sizes and used as an aggregate. Aggregate means a part of a composite material. For example, 90% of asphalt is composed of aggregate, and 80% of some concrete is stone. You can visualize this by thinking of marshmallows in a jello mold, or if you took a bowl of cereal and milk and let it freeze in the freezer. So where does our rock come from? The process of removing minerals and materials from the earth is called mining. A mine that produces stone is called a quarry. The life of a mine is in three steps. First, prospecting a site, then mining the stone, and finally, reclamation of the land once the mine is closed. In prospecting, you have to find a suitable site with good quality rock. The type of rock will vary with the geology of the area. There are three classes of rocks, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Igneous comes from the Latin word ignis, meaning fire. Igneous rocks are very hard and formed when rock cools from its molten state of magma or lava. Examples of igneous rocks would be granite, trap rock, and pegmite. So what's the difference between magma and lava? Magma refers to molten rock underground, while lava refers to both molten and solid rock expelled by a volcano. Rock that's been explosively ejected from a volcano is called pyroclast. Once the pyroclast fragments of rock and ash hit the ground, they are called tephra. Geologists can use tephra layers to create a timeline where archaeological records can be placed. This technique 
is called tephrochronology. Metamorphic rock forms when other rocks have been exposed to extreme heat and pressure changing over millions of years. Quartzite, slate, and marble are examples of metamorphic rock. Sedimentary rocks form from the accumulation of sediments in water or air. Sediments can be rock particles, animal remains, plant remains, or a mix of all of that. Limestone, sandstone, shale, and siltstone are all sedimentary rocks. Once a suitable site and geology has been found and cleared, the mining is done with the controlled use of explosives. The explosives are used to break apart the rock, and this process is called blasting. The first use of explosives in mining was in 1627 when gunpowder was first used in Hungary. The modern application of blasting uses a precise pattern of drilling holes and a calculated use of explosives to break apart the rock and no more. The mine will work downward in steps called benches. A mine of this type is referred to as an open pit mine. The Bingham Canyon Copper Mine near Salt Lake City is the world's deepest open pit mine. It is 2.75 miles across and three quarters of a mile deep. If you turn that mine into a stadium, it would hold nine million people. After blasting, the broken rock, called shot rock, is then picked up by loaders and placed into haul trucks. These haul trucks and loaders can reach enormous size, some being able to carry more than 300 tons at once. The rock is then dumped into a crusher, which breaks the large rocks into smaller ones. Crushers are lined with a unique metal called manganese steel. Manganese has extreme anti-wear properties. It will achieve up to three times its surface hardness as it gets hit over and over without becoming brittle. The crushed rock is then carried by belts over a series of screens and more crushers until the desired size is reached. Automated computers and sensors watch the plant and allow the operators to keep an eye on the entire process. Once the rock has been produced, it is then loaded onto trucks, trains, and barges to be shipped to its destination. So now you know some of the uses, history, geology, and how it's produced of the amazing, humble rock. <laughs>